Mike Butcher with TechCrunch and we're here at TechCrunch Davos Live and we are interviewing people all week and we have now uh, Gabo Aurora and uh, Barry Pausman uh, with Verseworks but you've been working with the United Nations on a whole bunch of uh, 360 degree virtual reality uh, movies and um, slightly uh, hilariously or not hilariously rather uh, more uh, my point I suppose is that I wrote about you guys last year at Davos when you released the first movie ever to be shot, a VR movie ever to be shot inside a refugee camp, camp called Clouds Over Sidra, which is an incredibly moving experience. I mean, just backing up, I mean, how did you start off with that project and then we'll, we'll talk about where you are now. Go ahead. Um, I mean, it was a very fortunate experience of uh, being able to meet Chris Milk um, at a party and uh, we really hit it off and it's really his sort of um, proprietary software and camera and his company Worstworks that gives us the opportunity to do incredible stuff um, and we just, Clouds of Procedure was an experiment just to see how it would be yeah. and after the really incredible reception we talked about it and we're like why don't we just keep doing this and see yeah. what happens and then we did Waves of Grace which is going to be in Sundance next week is also on the New York Times. So this is app. a new VR movie, and what's that about? Waves of Grace um, is, uh, was our second film. It was actually released September 1st, uh, and it is about an Ebola survivor named DeConte Davis, using her immunity to take care of orphan children. And um, it's also produced by Vice News, uh, which came in to really support it. Um, I was um, with Eddie Moretti in the DLD in Munich, and he was giving his talk and he was like, you know, he really, they really have been very big supporters. And he was really moved and he was crying. It was really strange. This is the um, fascinating thing about uh, VR movies, uh, is that they're, they're so immersive and they give you this amazing um, sort of immersion into a new world. Barry, you're the director of photography on a, on a new project that you guys are doing, the shot in, in the Gaza area. Um, I mean, as, as a director, when you're, when you're trying to shoot photography with VR cameras, I mean, I mean, in a way, I mean, to me, as an outsider, I don't know how it works. I mean, you just stick the camera in the ground and leave. I mean, get out of the shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it must be something, there's a lot to it, more to it than that, isn't there? <laughs> sure, think, yeah. sure. We think a lot about placement of camera and yeah. how that creates perspective. Um, you know, we think a lot about, you know, if you put that camera on top of a guard tower or somewhere where a person might not normally stand, then all of a sudden it kind of breaks that... Um, that you know, disbelief. They, oh, you know, you sort of put yourself in those shoes, and then if you move the camera where you couldn't be, um, let's say you put it really close to the ground, then the audience like loses the thread. Um, so I think that's a this a is big his focus. philosophy, actually. Uh, right. It does. We debate it sometimes. We debate about it. But it, it actually, I think you're probably right. Uh, I don't know if you saw Collisions, which is a masterful piece by Lynette uh, in in the in the Congress Center, and it she uses a lot of drones you know, and a lot of over footage. Yeah. And um, you would think that would work, you know, and I think it, it's, it's an amazing piece, but I, it, it doesn't occur to us because we want to make you feel like you're that person, that you've embodied a body. Yeah. And so it's hard for you to embody a body if you're in space because you feel like a ghost or you feel like, what are you doing flying through the sky? Right, it's a omniscient. So, you know, but, these are, but these are very like nerdy, geeked out, VR, <laughs> cinema. Welcome to Tech Crunch. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, 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 we yeah, love yeah. that stuff. Okay, okay. We can geek out all day about okay. VR. Don't I, worry. I didn't know how much we can go in depth because, you know, for most people, they don't question it. But for us, we question this stuff all the time. And, yeah. you know, I think the main sort of thing that um, we try to do, or I try to really focus when I'm with Barry on the ground, is really, I mean, you got to have something going on all around you. you you've got to move people. I mean, there's this beautiful scene in our new um, Gaza VR piece that we gave you a sneak preview of. Yeah. Um, that where, you this know, is called uh, A Mother's Wing, right? Uh, this My is called Mother's My Mother's Wing. Wing. My Mother's Wing, right. And it basically, the child walks kind of around the camera, but like in some ways, like you just look around and it just feels, and he goes down the steps and looks you in the eye, and you don't know I, why this moves you. I, it's so I crazy. think that is always for me. That is the mo the thing that hits you right between the eyes is is turning around and seeing a child standing in front of you. Uh, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, 
I, I'm going to have to compose myself here because it's just so moving, a lot of the stuff you shoot. Um, uh, virtual reality, you know, um, we have uh, we had an enormous uh, virtual reality section trade area at uh, TechCrunch Disrupt in San Francisco. It's, it's just taking off like wildfire. Um, do you feel as, as filmmakers and as creatives that uh, a lot of the technology is just going to become sort of commoditized and it, we'll just see it almost like sort of YouTubers uh, uploading VR all the time? Do you think that's going to have an effect on the medium at all? Personally, I think that's okay. Personally, uh, I think that's not okay. <laughs> uh, I think that he's a Democrat. I, I'm an aristocrat. Uh, that's why uh, we get along. I think there is uh, <laughs> some beauty to what uh, YouTubers have done with you know a 5D, um, and at the same time we get to take that 5D and make a feature film. So uh, you know they can move millions, and you can also uh, you know move the needle with feature film. I'm so just really with that same camera and that same format almost. I'm really yeah. just I can't stand that we need to do everything in this like it must go democratic and that's what's going to be like incredible about everything <laughs> i mean i mean can we not just enjoy where we are i mean <laughs> i'm sorry kids we're going to take the technology off you you've had the, you've had fun no because my smartphones everybody but, but it's, it's, it's so interesting because when we had filmmakers when we had real filmmakers yeah. they worked in wow. you know <laughs> <laughs> we could be self deprecating you know it's fine so but uh, <laughs> I don't know where we're going to go with this. But uh, look, um, no, I mean uh, it was expensive. Film was yeah, expensive. Yeah, there yeah. was rare people working in it, yeah. and I think we're still in that moment. And you'll have more auteurs. You'll have very interesting people come in. But yes, of course, if like we just flood the content in different ways, I don't think it's good for VR. By the way, I think right. VR needs to have the most excellent content ever right now. We should have a guild, you know. And we should, we should guard that and say, you know, we will turn people off and the technology will not, we can lose 10 years. Uh, and I think it was some example of whether it was, what was before Pixar or something. Some, I think it was Tron or something, or mm. Tr Trinitron, some movie that totally bombed at the box office, which was about animation. And even Pixar, they say that this put the industry, the whole industry back by like 10 years. Right. You know, mm. because you couldn't recover the faith of the people wanting to do it again. So like, yeah. we really, really need to be very careful about the content. Well, I guess the audience, um, yeah, to, to, be, to be brutal, I guess, um, once you've seen one VR movie, the next time you see another one, you, uh, you know, maybe you're let a little bit less bowled over by the whole experience. Right. But, and then, you know, there's a, it's still early days. And the thing is that the Samsung Gear VR has only just gone on sale, hasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. whereas uh, you demoed uh, Clouds Over Sidra to me, one year ago at, uh, at the UN yeah. and, uh, and it's uh, here at Davos, sorry. And, um, and yeah, and it was brand new. I mean, so, so it's, 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 we'll have to wait and see what happens. Right, it will lose know, the shine. The I think um, uh, when we develop... The true we... storytelling is eternal. Oh. Hmm. Yes. So it doesn't matter in the sense that I think people will get over... Yeah, we don't, we don't realize anymore we're watching things on iPhones or whatever, but if it's compelling content, we'll keep watching it. And I think that's what we have to do. So yeah. Verseworks is going to continue. You're, you've got new, um, new films coming out. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of new sort of productions going on. What's, what's 2016 looking like for you guys? So I mean, 2015 was a good year, you know. Oh, and on top of, uh, on top of the, you know, the getting the opportunity to do what I do with the documentaries, I worked with Chris Milk uh, as second unit director on the U2 Song for Song one. VR um, video, which I really encourage a lot of people to check out. With the, awesome. I think it's an incredible piece. Um, so I want to kind of, I want to kind of move in a direction that um, is a little bit different. Um, I think the we'll have the Gaza um, piece, My Mother's Wing, come out very soon, and it's in sneak previews right now. And um, we also want to do something um, around episodic VR. I want to see if we can serialize. VR as a podcast, but like you get addicted to it, you could follow storylines. So I have something in the third round of Sundance Story Lab right now. Hope I get it. Do you think we'll ever see a sort of house of cards yeah, in VR? Exactly. That's but Netflix. that's what we're trying to do. I mean, yeah, what, exactly. so my vision is my vision is to go to a cable company and say, you know what, you charge me ten dollars for this box, this cable box that I have no choice but to get. What if you sent me something and said Taylor Swift porn? In VR. Music video. You know, music video, sorry. <coughs> sorry. So with that. Yeah. Taylor Swift, take two. Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, 
Yeah, we, we will edit that bit out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, yeah. if you, what if you have a very provocative Taylor Swift music video in virtual reality, or you have maybe, something? Bo- may, maybe hey, maybe yeah. you have a UNVR series yeah. you know, yeah, coming Avengers. in there, um, yeah. and then all of a sudden. You know, you say, rent this Oculus Rift for $10 a month, mm. make that deal with Netflix that builds the buzz, and then put yeah. them together. Yeah. People will it, build the anticipation, advertise at the Oscars, you know, yeah. you know and at the Super Bowl, and then all of a sudden you'll have people sign up like droves to rent these things. And we pay like 10, we don't pay that much for our iPhones, you know, because they, we don't realize the cost of it. Yeah, yeah. So if you put it in the cable bill and you don't really tell people what it's about, you know, it'll be yeah. fine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard <laughs> it. Know the VR right in. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. We're focusing <laughs> Taylor Swift videos uh, in VR in an episodic manner. Marvelous. Uh, Gabo Aurora and Barry Pausman, thank you so much for coming to talk to TechCrunch about your, your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.